a few things that help anyone to achieve their dreams and desires include things like to-do lists, goal setting, making plans, and sticking to those plans. I, for one, have not mastered really any of these, but there are some who who do it or have done it very well. Uh, I look back in my past with my dad and the life that he's lived, you know, and I look at the jobs that he's held, the cars that he's owned, the houses that he has purchased, the vacations that we, we used to go on, and all those things are far beyond what I've been able to achieve in my lifetime at the same ages that he did for himself. And several years ago, I found out that um, that he had really, he had made lists of things that he wanted to accomplish or have a certain time frame of when he wanted to have these things done. And he had put his desires in writing and gave himself something to shoot for in his life. And if I remember right, He did reach most, if not all, of the goals that he had written down. Now these lists, these goals, and the plans that we make can also have an impact with our spiritual lives. In Exodus chapter 24, in the beginning of chapter 25, there's a few examples of steps that we can take for spiritual growth. I'm going to start at Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. It says, And then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance, but Moses alone is to approach the Lord. The others must not come near, and the people may not come up with him. When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, Everything the Lord has said we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and and set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people, and they responded, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis lazuli, as bright blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua, his aide, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. He said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and Hur are with you, and anyone involved in a dispute can go to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went on up the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ramskins dyed red, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. 
And then from this point on in the book of Exodus, God is, gives instructions to Moses on what this sanctuary, what this tabernacle is to look like, and all the elements that are part of that. Uh, but if we look at this passage, <clears throat> chapter 24, beginning of 25 of Exodus, we can see some, some of the steps that we can take in that spiritual growth that we are in pursuit of. And in our journey of, to spiritual growth, one step is to take to take is to simply come to him. We are to come to him whenever he calls. You know, this passage, it begins with God inviting Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of, the, of Israel to come into his presence. He had called on them to come up to the mountain, to come up and be with him. But they were, most of them, all of them, were to stay at a distance except for Moses. Moses, that was the only one that was able to draw near to God on that mountain. But, but God called to them. He said, come to me. And they came. In the same way, he is always calling on us to join him. He is always waiting on us to come into his presence. Even Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, he says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so that just that first step is simply coming to him. You know, we are invited into his presence and we are simply to come. And as we pursue him, another step to take is to worship him. We're to worship the God in which we serve. God's presence is so powerful that the people were supposed to worship at a distance. All except Moses, who was able to come directly into God's presence. But the power of God's presence is mind-boggling, I guess you could say. In Exodus 33, we read that you cannot see my face. God says this. You cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. But, they, but we still worship him because of that power, that presence that he, that he has upon us. And Moses builds an altar to, to the Lord and had sacrifices made upon it. He worshiped the Lord in the way that it was instructed for him to worship. He took the blood from the sacrifices and splashed it against the altar and he sprinkled it on the people following the instructions that were given. And for us, as we worship the Lord, as we follow him, we no longer have to take the blood from sacrifices to cover the altar and the people because Jesus fulfilled the sacrifice once and for all. His blood that he shed on the cross covers us all, and we worship him for that truth, for that fact. And as we worship, we grow spiritually. To grow spiritually will require us to listen to him, listen to his voice, listen for what he is saying. Moses heard the message from God, and he shared that message with the people. And we need to be, be sure that we are being attentive to the voice of God as we go about our days. You know, we don't have it like as it appears in the Old Testament where, where God would speak. It seems like audibly would speak to the people. But we still have his voice speaking to us. He speaks through his written word if we will listen for it for him. As we read his word and we meditate on it, he will speak through that word. He also speaks by his spirit that indwells all that believe in him. And it's the indwelling spirit that leads us into all truth. And will we listen to that indwelling spirit as it guides us? He speaks through the interactions that we have throughout our days. And these interactions are not accidental or by coincidence. They are oftentimes ordered and ordained by God. So are we listening for him and the directions that he gives? 
And as we listen, and once we hear his voice and we listen to what he was saying, what he is saying to us, we're to obey his teaching. And when Moses shared God's message to the people, it's interesting that the people responded with the words, everything the Lord has said we will do. And again, they said, we will do everything the Lord has said we will obey. But as we learn from from the scripture, as the story continues on with Moses up on the mountain meeting with God, um, the Israelites did not follow through with that profession of obedience. It was matter it just a matter of a few days that they turned away from God and worshipped an idol instead of obeying him. And that obedience, you know, a lot of times most people don't want to follow through. They don't want that obedience. They think the Bible is is written or God's um, his desires for us are burdensome. But God's teachings are for us. It's not to destroy us, but to help us. Obedience to his word is for our benefit. Our lives are better for through that, the obedience that we give to the Lord. And as that Matthew passage stated, when Jesus spoke, he says, come to me. You know, I, I will, my burdens are light. And so we can find rest in him if we will follow his lead. Then as we live our lives for him, we need to take time to behold his glory Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, the 70 elders, they saw the presence of God, which we know could have caused death. But it says that he did not raise his hand against them. His glory was, is so powerful that no one could see his face and live. Only Moses was able to enter in his, into his presence and still live. And if we look at what happened with Moses in Exodus 34? It says, Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. And they were afraid to come near him. And you think about that. Just being in the presence of God changed Moses' complexion. That it shone. There was glory within his own face for being in the glory, beholding the glory of God that was before him. Even at a distance. His glory was a remarkable sight. It says to the Israelites, when Moses went up on the mountain and the Israelites were still on, on solid ground, it says to the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. And we need to behold the glory of God. Where do we see the glory of the Lord? Are we paying attention to the beauty that is around us, to his glory? All of his creation cries out to him. And the beauty that we see in nature, the beauty that we see in humanity, the beauty that we see in, in all things is a pale image of the glory of God. And are we beholding his glory through his creation? Then as the more we experience him, the more we will want to, or hopefully will want to, give ourselves to him. You know, God told Moses, have the people take a collection and an offering uh, for the building of God's sanctuary. And the people were to give the materials for the building of that house, his tabernacle. And it tells us that, um, you know, if they were prompted to give, they were to give. And they gave their gold and silver and bronze, precious stones, different colored yarn and linen, and all the things that were for the house of God. 
All those items, they were to be used for specific purposes within God's tabernacle that was to be built. And the people, they gave what they had in abundance to be used for God's glory. In the same way, we are to give of ourselves, to give of our best. You know, whether it's our time, our talent, our, our talents, our treasures, we are to give them over to God to be used by him for we are the building materials for his house his sanctuary and it comes from us and so we need to be willing to give ourselves to him and it's in that spiritual growth that time of spiritual growth that we need to keep in mind that we are to become his sanctuary you know the people were to take the materials that were offered and use them to build God's sanctuary, the place in which God would dwell. And we see in the building of the tabernacle, the building of the temple, how all those items, uh, the precious materials, the gold, the silver, the bronze, the precious stones, all those things were used to bring beauty to the house of God. Well, in the same way, we are to become the sanctuary. We are those precious materials. We are the precious stones that are being joined together, being fitted together, being formed together to form the house of God. And so as we work together and live together and live life together, he is fitting us together perfectly to build his house, his sanctuary. And as we grow to become his dwelling place, we need to always remember to welcome him. Once the tabernacle, the sanctuary was, was built, God said he would make his dwelling with men. Now we, as the house of God, now we get to welcome him, not only into our lives, but also into the place he will dwell for eternity. We are his tabernacle in which he dwells. We are the place where he is committing his presence. He's not only in us individually, but corporately. And he can express himself through us as he dwells in us and through us and by us. Because it's all about him. It's all about his house. It's all about his dwelling place. And as we grow spiritually, we are becoming more useful to the God of heaven, to where he will reside with us and he will live in us and he will live through us as his body, as his church, as his house, as his family. So a couple questions. Will we take the needed steps Will we set the goals? Will we make the plans to grow in our faith? And will we intentionally come together, allowing the Spirit to form us into the dwelling place God desires? Will we allow the Spirit to sand us down, to chisel us down so that we fit perfectly together to build God's sanctuary, the house of God? I hope we can grab hold of that, that imagery, that we are the precious stones. We are the precious materials that are building his house. And as we grow in, spirit, in our spiritual lives, in our faith, that that foundation or that building, that sanctuary will be solid in how we live our lives. God bless you. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time.